So good morning. We, we will go ahead and start this session. This is the last session before we eat. That's important to me. So, uh, and you're in room eight, and the title of this session is Atlas Enhancements and Atlas SAP Integration Project. Um, there are a lot of folks who have been involved with this since the beginning, but the one person that I know has been here since day one on this is Miss Leilani Paul. She she is um, the uh, EA, EAU uh, group leader for the middle, mitigation and modeling group. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce Leilani, and then she will introduce her team as they go through the go through this presentation. So Leilani, thank you. All right, so we've got people handing out our survey cards. I'm going to make sure everybody gets. Um, it is part of our communication plan. Uh, we have a wonderful team here, and I'm going to introduce them. And some people you probably haven't met before, and I, they're going to be doing most of the talking, so you get to know them more, because I think y'all all heard me talk enough most of the time. So we're talking about Project Atlas, the 2022 vision. That'll be our second part of our discussion. But at first, we're going to be talking about ASI, or um, Data Integration Project. And so y'all know me, Leilani Paul. I'm the um, Business uh, Project Manager. We also have Christina Solberg right over here. She'll be talking in just a minute. She is our business consultant. We have Tangela Davis down at the end. She is our IT um, business project manager. So we're doing kind of a two in the box, our business project manager and our IT project manager. We have Caitlin Meyer, probably most of y'all know her. She's our lead business analyst on the business side. And then we have George, Dorothy Sock. Come on, I knew it. I practiced and I practiced. I'm sorry. Uh, Joythe is our um, IT um, business analyst. So um, we want to welcome the group and y'all get to hear from them today. Um, I just want to talk to you, give you the introductions. So what are our workshop objectives? We want you to just get a high level knowledge of what the ASI data integration project is because it is new for everybody. And then we want to focus on the 2022 vision for Atlas coming up. And that's a lot of outreach and a lot of communication that's going to be going on. <coughs> Excuse me. You can get more detailed information and um, provide input to our team at our table in the vendor's all, uh, room. Um, we want you to fill out that card. That's a three question card. Put your name, email, and the three questions. Drop them in the basket at our table and you'll be entered to win a $50 Amazon gift card. We'll do that drawing in the next break after lunch, the 2.15 to 2.30. So make sure you get it filled out, go to our table, see our team, ask questions, see our materials, and drop your card in and get some candy while you're there. Um, and then we want, to, want you to learn how the business unit needs drives everything we're doing. From the very beginning with Atlas, it was all business unit driven. What you said you needed are the tools that we're trying to develop. Our team is just the mechanism. We're just the feet and the legs that put into action the things that you want. We work with our IT partners to help get that implemented, work across different business units, and we're going to have a big outreach towards, uh, to the divisions coming up starting in February. And then the really big thing is understanding the why behind the project. Um, if you weren't involved in the development, the why may just feel like it's a pain point to you. Why do we need to do it a certain way? Why do we need naming conventions? Why do we need to uh, submit something through Atlas instead of SharePoint? Ellen just gave a great presentation for the IT tools, and she mentioned Atlas in there. Well, there is a why behind it. It's called data governance. We don't have data governance on anything else. And if you want to be able to query your project and do project analysis, you need data governance. Right now, it's just a pain. But as you see, we talk about the benefits today, you'll understand more about why we're having to go through that pain to get to a more innovative, more advanced DOT reporting system. Um, so for the ASI part, ASI Data Integration Project Agenda, we're going to give you a quick overview. We're going to show you the business case that started this project. It's developed under PMO, an IT process. We're going to talk about the benefits of that. What is the why of why we're doing that project? What progress we've made to date? What the expectations are of the project? 
how you can communicate to us. We want to know, do you want emails? Do you want a website? What's the best way to communicate out the project results? Um, our team contacts, so you can get up with any of us. And then we'll go into a question and answer session before we switch over to the Atlas Vision presentation. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Christina. You got your clicker? Are you on go? Okay. All right. Thank you, uh, thanks, Lonnie. Good morning, everybody. Um, so I'm just going to give a very high-level, simplified example of what the ASI project is going to do for us. Um, it's going to really save everybody a lot of time. So I want to start with a very simple example. Um, also, my favorite game is Pictionary, so these are all pictures. <laughs> um, so this probably is more relatable to the DOT staff, but consultants also have had to deal with this. Um, so just picture, you know, you're starting your, your day and you're, you don't know how you're going to get everything done. You are so busy and then the phone rings or you get an email and it's the chief's office or the division engineer or your manager and they want data and they want a lot of it and they want it now. And so you have to stop everything you're doing. It's all hands on deck. You don't know where you're, you're going to begin. Do you go to SAP? Do you go to SharePoint, um, high cams? You know, there's a lot of different places. Do you go to some project file that's on a laptop? Um, and then these requests just keep coming. So, um, you know, it's, it's a big, it can, it can take a lot of time to gather um, data. And uh, some examples of the data that might be requested are for like all the projects going to right of way um, in, in a certain division or being let or the um, annual CE audit, you know, um, there's, it's endless. So not to insult your intelligence, but this is a very simple example. Um, imagine a huge pile of dirty laundry and then you want to put together a sim an outfit. So where do you begin? You, you're like, okay, find your pants, find the top, find the socks, but then there's still a missing sock. And um, you, you know, it's just, it's unorganized, it's mismatched, dirty. The data might, you know, in this example might not be completely accurate. Um, so on a very high level, what the ASI project is going to accomplish is it's going to take this unsorted, um, mismatched pile of data. Um, it's in a lot, there's a lot of different systems and it's going to clean it up, sort it, fold it, organize it, um, almost with the push of a button, which really um, we're talking about querying, uh, creating a query that will um, allow folks to, you know, you're not gonna have to interrupt your work anymore. Um, to when there are these data requests. And I do want to say these data requests are um, they're for very important business decisions. Um, you know, folks aren't trying to make your lives more difficult. <laughs> um, so just want to close with, um, you know, everybody's busy. The question is, what are we busy about? You know, do you want to be busy focusing on your mission critical items or um, get interrupted every, every time there's a request for this important data. So um, the team is going to go into the details of how this is going to happen. And um, anyway, it's a really exciting project. So with that, with that um, Josie? Yep. Thanks, Christina. Thanks, Leilani and Phil. And I guess um, Christina gave a good foundation of the business case and why do we need this project, right? So uh, let me start off by saying when we say ASI, yes, it mentions only Atlas and SAP as of now, but it is a misnomer and it would be considering other systems as well. And we are going to see how we can integrate the data from all these systems, the key data, from all these systems and make it in a way that is helpful for the users or the end users. So starting with the business case, we all know like 
just like how uh, Christina was saying about the laundry pile, you know, if you want to pick, say, just one sock, it's difficult to pick it up because, I mean, they are not integrated, they are not sorted, they are not organized. So currently, the systems that we have that manages all the key project data are not integrated. So there is lack of integration across the systems. And what happens because of that is we spend so much time providing the right data. When somebody requests for the data, we, we just stop whatever we are doing. And then we go researching, OK, go into multiple systems to get the data that was requested. And this also result, there is a lot of lack of uh, spatial data capabilities in many systems. And because of that, it also limits the use of the GIS technology. And we are talking data everywhere. So what is data? I mean, we need to, whatever the data that we are seeing, we need to ensure that the data is of good quality, there is enough data integrity, and all the data standards are met. So for that, we need to have strong data governance, right? So when we don't have all these things, it, of course, it leaves everyone frustrated because people kind of spend so much time spending, you know, finding the information that they need. And so this, based on this, what happens is it could produce like inefficient and uncertain reporting and it just increases the frustration and it takes time for the leadership or the management to make the decision. So this, if you look at a whole perspective, giving it it is a barrier to the project and program communication. So how is this ASI project going to help with the executive vision of supporting the pro program and project delivery? Is what we are doing right now is we are trying to identify the current key project status data from all the systems and who are the roles associated with it, with it and the associated milestones and deliverable. And we will be also identifying the future key project status data, which one should be the systems of record. Because sometimes when we don't have proper data governance, what happens is we might be entering the same data in two systems or there might be data duplication. So which one is the authoritative source of that particular data, you know? Uh, is that transferred from one system to the other in the format that it is needed to be. So this all needs proper data governance, which will increase the uh, reliability, the accuracy, and the access to the project data across multiple systems. Yes, this is a long list that I just spent, like business need or business case, uh, but the change is difficult, but this is going to help us a lot. And just to look about the benefits, the benefits is real. Again, I am just emphasizing on the data quality and reliability. I just mentioned why we need data governance. And for that, we also need to figure out how we are going to link the data from these multiple systems and make sure the right user has the access to the right data. And that is going to improve the data quality and reliability. And again, because we also uh, have that inaccurate uh, reporting or uh, decreased efficiency, how do we do that? We standardize it and how do we automate the queries so that uh, less time is spent on generating those queries and how do we communicate with the uh, team about those data and perform the needed geospatial analysis. These all points are going to increase the efficiency of reporting and together the data quality and reliability and the increased efficiency of reporting is finally going to help in the project and program analysis. Okay, so what have we been doing as of now is, I don't know if uh, we have the stakeholders who have already been part of the three workshops that we had earlier. So to begin with the contacts, we started out by sending out a survey to all the divisions associated to identify the contacts who would be interested in participating in those workshops. So once we got those contacts, we uh, scheduled three workshops we divided it 
into groups and we try to identify what is the current data that you think is important for a project. So right now we conducted three workshops and Christina has been of great help in analyzing the data and figuring out uh, which system has what data and uh, what is the who who is the person who inputs the data or uses the data so we have completed that current data analysis we have identified the gaps so after identifying the gaps we have reached out uh, to those contacts or whoever uh, we were referred to uh, and got the clarification and validated that whatever we are we have understood is right and the next step would be to present those data that we gathered through these uh, three workshops to the stakeholders and the management. And this is the ASI project schedule. So if you see, let me just go back and just uh, uh, give you, because you might be seeing some new words like sprint, sprint zero, sprint one, and sprint two. This project started in October 27th. Uh, prior to that, there was an agile transformation effort that was going on with, within the state where uh, ASI project was identified as a pilot project where we kind, to, uh, kind of uh, tried to implement a different project methodology, which is called agile. And so the sprint is nothing but a four week iteration where we try to deliver some form of deliverable at the end of each sprint. So what we did during the first sprint, or sprint zero as we call it, it's more of research and trying to figure out who the stakeholders are and create those stakeholders register. And the sprint one, which is the first, uh, which, is, which can also be called like an iteration, is the feature 101 where uh, we tried to identify the current key project status data. So sprint one and sprint two, we did the same thing. We conducted three workshops. And today is January 26th. So we have completed the identification of the current key project status data. So the next sprint, we would be focusing on the future state to see if this is what you need or do you think any other data would help you in understanding the project status? And where do you think it is a good uh, spot place to view those data? So this is the schedule that we have. And we are expecting to have a soft release, meaning this might not be the complete ASI project deliverable, but we will be having some sort of deliverable during the soft release. Okay, so coming to the next steps. So if you are already a stakeholder, we already have you on our list and we just expect you to provide feedback on how the workshops went. And as I told you earlier, we'll be making a presentation on uh, what data we gathered and we are just going to show you and that might give you a better idea of how you want to take it forward. And if you have not been involved in these workshops and if you would like to be involved in the future workshops, I would highly suggest you to go through the summary of those slides or reach out to us to understand what we have been doing so far. And if you are interested, please let us know and we will include you for the future workshops, which starts in sprint three. Okay, so that's mine. And Tangela Davis, our project manager, would uh, talk about the project expectations. Thank you. Thank you, Dorothy. Good morning, everyone. Before we get into project expectations in the next segment of the presentation, by a show of hands, how many of you, based upon what you've heard today, believe that this solution could really impact and add value to your day-to-day -day life by show of hands? Excellent, excellent. And this leads us into the next segment because because by show of hands, you've indicated interest and you see this as a value-added solution, we want you to be a vital part of contributing to this journey, this project journey. So here are some of the project expectations that we, we need you to be involved. 
follow the standards and data govern governance. You've heard that word a lot throughout this morning's presentation. Um, in order for this to be a success, it's going to be important for us to develop some standards of governance as well as maintaining that data. The next thing is we need input from you. We need to hear from you what's working well, what's not. What would the future look like for you? What does a winning solution look like for you? And so that means also sharing um, with other stakeholders this wonderful ASI project and those work-life benefits in terms of how that value will continue to enhance upon what you're already doing. The next thing we need in terms of how you can contribute is to share your stakeholder challenges, your pain points. Anything that is impacting the, the project data, whether you're entering the data, if you're sharing it, or reporting. One of the things that we didn't place a lot of emphasis on as it relates to this presentation, but I definitely, if you're gonna be a part of this journey with us, I want you to think about the reporting aspect. Because when we talk about the data governments, we talk about the integrity of the data, think about the reports that you're generating. If that data is not good, what do you think you're gonna get in terms of that report? That's exactly right. In our leadership, they're making some very major decisions based upon what they're receiving from you in those reports. And so that's a part of what, how you can contribute. Also, as you've heard earlier, because you will be a part of this journey, we need to know how to communicate with you. So you should have received a card earlier where you can um, pretty much tell us what methods that you would like for us to leverage to have you be engaged with this project, whether it be email, whether it be, you know, standing up a website where we can kind of provide feedback and you give us feedback. We want to hear from you. So if you would please take a moment and complete that card, but more importantly, stop by our table in the vendors area and talk to us and also bring your card. And there's also that drawing, as you recall, Leilani mentioned earlier. Um, so we want you to be a part of that as well. Uh, so here are the three questions that we're asking. What are the forms of communication you would like to receive? Would you like to participate? And I think by a show of hands, you've already indicated that you see this as a value added solution to improve your day to day. And then finally, what is your biggest pain point with the project data management? What are you experiencing today? Here is a listing of how you can reach us. And this uh, slide deck will be available to you. Uh, Lilani, I think you're gonna put it out there for them to access. So you will be able to contact any one of us um, and I also have access to this slide deck as well. What I'd like to do now is uh, we have a few minutes to take some Q&A. So our team, if you would like to come up and be prepared to answer some questions based upon what we can receive from the audience. Are there any questions based upon what you've heard today? This is your time. Anybody have any questions right now? Just raise your hand. Um, if not, yeah, go ahead. We'll bring the mic to you. Where's, where's the question at? Right. Uh, this may be a stupid question. No question is stupid. <laughs> ASI We're stand in the midst of a project. No question is stupid. I was trying to figure it out. What does ASI stand for? Um, ASI stands for Atlas SAP Integration. We shorten the use of the acronym all the time because it's really a misnomer like Georgie said earlier is because we're looking across multiple systems. That's a holdover from when I first submitted like my little one page, 10, 10 little block form to get it started as a CFO project. There's a, like an online form you have to fill out. And so I just wrote ASI, Atlas SAP Integration. But um, it really is looking at integration across all systems that we work in. Anyone else? Um, I'll just note there's more cards if you came in late than we didn't get to you when you first came. And the cards are on the front table. They're also at the table in the vendor area. If you fill that out, those three questions, and drop it in the basket in the vendor area, then you can be put into the drawing at the uh, after lunch today. Right. One per customer. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Are there any other questions? I know you're anxious to have lunch. I'm good. That's another question. Don't go to lunch yet. There's another presentation. <laughs> um, my background is a little bit in quality control and um, quality assurance management and testing. So I was just curious if you could kind of go into a little bit about how they are going to program this to make it available to do queries at the user end. Dorothy and Leilani, would you want to take well, this one? Well, that's kind of a, a question that's down the road. Like I said, we want agile work and agile compared to waterfall. Waterfall, you collect all of that up front. And somebody is an agile expert. Tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> you know, I see Mark back there. You tell waterfall me you, you do, that is correct. Right. For agile, we're doing it in boxes, those sprints. And mm -hmm. so we haven't gotten to that point yet. That's what we're building up to. And that's where IT will help us with those solutions. So the business is, you know, we're working, like I said, two in a box, <laughs> gathering all the business requirements, and then we'll start still working down that road and seeing those actual how do you program it. You know, that's an IT development question that our developers will handle. But it's going to be with in hand in hand with the business unit. So the oh. functionality addresses the business need, is driven by the IT developer side. And I will add, guys, I will add, guys, that Agile is a beautiful thing because it's very collaborative and it, it enables you to really, instead of where you would waterfall, you're fixed with these requirements and you're not able to change stuff. Uh, with Agile, it's a lot more flexibility um, because we're doing it in real time as we're moving through the sprints. And that is why we need your contributions throughout throughout the project. Are there any other questions? Applications, or um, are you looking also outside of NCDOT to like systems that your partners may have um, and, and putting those, integrating with those as well? The current requirements, we're all looking at internal systems. So, like I said, we're uh, this is very um, flexible. Uh, Chris mm -hmm. Warner wrote into the PMO contract a spot where you go back and readdress and readdress and readdress if needs come up. And so if, if needs come up during those stakeholder mm -hmm. interviews, it may not be addressed on this project, but it could generate another project that would, uh, you know, those things would be captured and put into that same type of system, of uh, review, gather requirements, and then development. But the, the, PMO, uh, the ASI project focuses on internal systems. If there are no more questions, I'm gonna turn it over to Leilani to close us out for this segment of the presentation. We do have another one, so please don't leave. Yes, there's no other questions? Uh, yes, uh, I, I wanted to know right now what I'm working on in our unit is uh, I'm an external contractor. Mm -hmm. And so I'm working on uh, building a system that will be documents. Um, and I'm just curious to find out if Part of the Agile system and this integration will also allow for documents to support the information that's being requested and uh, available to be printed out on any kind of um, report. Um, actually, um, I'll refer you back over to Atlas. Atlas is where we're receiving, um, SharePoint stores all the documents. Mm -hmm. Atlas has created a workbench that creates that data governance and that um, document management and that uh, view on top of that that uh, is organized by project and discipline. And if you have a deliverable, a key deliverable or final that's part of a project record, I can a document that is needed to support some decision that was made. You can load that through the Atlas workbench and then store it in SharePoint, but then it's accessible across the board. Um, that one actually is uh, from what Donna asked about. We have the external workbench where then our external partners can also see that documentation if it's appropriate to them. So you do have that external look through the Atlas workbench for that. But we can get you some information. You come to our table. We actually have it set up at the table and doing some demonstration. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, I would you. say in this context, data also includes documents. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, data, we include the privilege of documents. That's right. Okay. I'll Thank turn you. it over to you. Thank you, Carolyn. All right, and so I want to thank our team um, that was from the ASI. Y'all got to uh, meet some of our new guys. 
Well, actually, this is the first time we've met him in person because we've been working virtually for two years. So this conference has really brought us to actually see each other. So now I want to talk about, I think I can take this off while I'm up here, right? <laughs> now I want to talk about Atlas. We're going to transfer over to that. So what is Atlas? You've heard of it. Um, we're going to tell you about our 2020 vision. We want to talk about why use Atlas. That, again, that point of why. What are the benefits? We're going to address some of your common questions, get some interaction going on here with you, some that we've already heard, and let you introduce some others. And then again, how can you get involved? What are the plans for 2022 that you can get involved with and help drive those solutions that we're working on? So Atlas is advancing transportation through linkages, automation, and screening. And the three tools really address those three things. We have the workbench, which I was saying earlier, is where you put all your deliverables, your final deliverables get stored in SharePoint. That gives you that data governance so you can find them, you can query them, you run reports on them, it organizes it. You got your geospatial analysis. We've got new data and spatial files now that actually links those documents to a spatial location. So let's say you went to a bridge project and um, you wanted to get the bridge survey report, culvert survey report that Matt's been working on. Well, now you can click on it on the map and get those documents that are linked to that. So that's been, we've got some of those out now and there are, others are coming out in the future. Then the Atlas Home is a new thing we're working on. That's one of the big things we'll be asking you. What do you want to see on your home page? And it's where you can go and put all your favorites, where you can run your queries, but we want to know what's important to you. What are the data points that need to go on that home page that makes the most functionality and the most value for your day-to-day -day work? We have our business support. We have an admin tool. You know we've come around to you and then updates and have you aligned with PDN. We can do all that on the fly. It doesn't require another IT action to get all of that done. So it's very quick, can be done on the fly as you need those changes. If you're making changes for PDN, we can incorporate those in to your Atlas Workbench page. And then we have a whole, I don't know what the word is, parcel of uh, uh, subject matter experts from internal subject matter experts working with teams and consultants to build your database that you need, to help update your data, to help create new data layers if you need it, um, to take your business needs and bring them back into the group. Um, I'm not gonna read all this to you, you've probably seen some of this before, but this is some of the things um, Atlas does now and we're looking to make those improvements going forward. So I'll turn it over to our Caitlin Meyer play MC for a little interaction uh, moment here. Um, thank you, Leilani. Um, I think I know a lot of you guys in this room. Um, hi, I'm Caitlin. You would have seen me on a lot of probably emails coming your way uh, related to Atlas and other um, IT initiatives we have going on at the department. Um, QR code on the screen. I think we're, you've seen a lot of these in presentations, so hopefully uh, this will get you to where you're going. Um, I'm going to pull up a whiteboard here in a second, and we're going to kind of do a brainstorm to build our own FAQs. I have that kind of preset with a couple of questions that I know I get a lot about Atlas, but this is your opportunity to kind of tell us what's confusing, because we know that there is confusion, um, and we want to help clarify that. As Leilani mentioned, um, one of our main goals for 2022 is to clarify simplify and get that understanding out to the organization about why we need to use some of these tools. One of that big reason that you've heard over and over again is data governance. Um, you know, we're a very large organization. We have, you know, more projects going on than almost every state in the nation. And we need stuff to help us get organized. When I first joined the project um, back in 2019, um, you know, a lot of what we were hearing from stakeholders at the time was, when I get that phone call from the chief's office to say, hey, I need a list of where you've done stream delineations across the state, or I need a list of all of the CE documents that have been completed in the past two years, we were literally paying consultants in some cases to go through our project files and find that information for us because it wasn't easy to find. Um, so putting these kind of gatekeeper mechanisms on the front end 
our hope is that this, this is going to trigger snowball effects. So initially, you know, first two years, you're going to have, you know, what we've done in the first two years. But think about five to six years from now when you get that call that says, what have you done in the last 10 years in my state? Well, that's a whole lot of data to truck through. So if we're able to get uh, using these standardized methods to get our documents in, tie those documents to additional attribute data. Think about things like date of signatures on documents. That might be different than your upload date into some sort of system, giving you tools to be able to sort through those things. Um, so I'm going to jump over to our whiteboard. QR code's still up here if you didn't have a chance to scan. I will say, because of XYZ reasons, consultants in the room might not be able to get to this, but I can add your questions here in live time. If you are a DOT staff person, you can feel free to add your own post-it note to our whiteboard. By doing that, you just need to click the notes. If you'd like to pick your favorite color, and slide it over onto the screen. So some common questions that I know that I have heard over the years are things like, why can't I just upload my final document to connect pre-construction like I always have? I will cover that here briefly. Um, can I get a show of hands if that's a question that you have had or you have heard? I thought it would be a common one. Okay, the other thing that I have heard is, isn't Atlas just supposed to be GIS? No, <laughs> but we'll cover why and what else is involved in that. Um, anybody have that question? Anybody think it's just a map application? All right, good. We've done some communication <laughs> around that. That's good. Um, how about um, questions about how Atlas uh, factors into the PDN? Anybody had that question come across their desk? OK. It's, a, it's an interesting timeline, right? So um, Atlas you know, got first released in uh, June of 2019. Um, IPD started fall of 2019. So we all kind of heard the call for needing to get out of our silos. Atlas started us there, but now we're in a really cool, I think, period and point in time right now to take the past two years of learning of what's worked, what hasn't worked. We now have the PDN that provides us a standard how can we go back and realign these things so things really do work more consistently across the state? Um, if you were at the recent ACEC NCDOT conference, that was, I think, the last line in the secretary's presentation was, I want to see consistent project delivery across the state so we can measure what we're doing and see if we're making the impact that we want. And I think some of these revisions we have planned is going to get us to that point. Um, question I've heard a lot. Raise your hand if you've heard it. What deliverable do I need to put into Atlas? I was like, that's got to be everybody in this room, probably, right? And then the other thing, because um, this, you know, you got to have an owner of these applications. So isn't Atlas just an environmental app? Why do, why do I care if I'm not an EAU? Anybody asked themselves that question before? Um, well, you know, because it's an environmental analysis unit, we understand that that's confusing. But what we found over the years is we really need champions for these things, and we need people who focus on it on a daily basis. EAU is just the unit that stepped up to the plate. Um, we'll cover that in a little bit more detail. I think there's something like 27, 28 uh, disciplines covered in that project delivery network. At this point in time, 17 of those fall into the Atlas workbench as of today. Um, and more may be coming in the future as we're coming out and, and doing some outreach to figure out you know, what's working for you, what's not working for you. So lots more to come. Uh, audience participation, feel free to add directly on to the chart itself if you have other common questions. Anybody else have a question that's just been burning on their mind about Atlas in general that I can add to my list and, and handle uh, kind of ad hoc for you guys today? Yes, Andy. Yeah. And I ask this question because I know Atlas is so 
somewhat do, but I'm still interacting with a lot of consultants who don't know much about Atlas at all. Yep. Even though they've done a lot of work with the department. Yep, uh, definitely. So I'm gonna we're gonna touch on as our final slide a little bit more about the communication plans because we do you know we've been very self reflective over you know these past two years of what needs to improve and what can we do better and communication is that is Leilani's and I's uh, tact for all of 2022 and that communication in our mind um, get me tell me if I do this wrong Leilani but we want to be communicating out more efficiently to our external agencies our divisions. Also, you know, discipline groups, consultants that might be confused about the process. We want to communicate up and down the value of those things. And which one did I miss? Over. We want to communicate better with our IT partners about why we need these sorts of things or why we think we need these sorts of things and how they can help us to achieve those goals in this environment. So communication will definitely hit on. Thank you for that question. Anybody else got a burning Atlas question that you're like, what the heck? If y'all could just answer this question, I would understand what you're talking about, Kaylin. Anybody else got a question like that? Go ahead, James. I'm not familiar with Atlas. So that is okay. Mm -hmm. Does it have, is it, is it the place where something, where you can find, or something can be put, such as historical data for knowing like what the right of way on a particular road is and maybe links to documents that show that. Because you know there's roads where we obtained the right of way back in the forties or fifties or so. We have those plans actually online that the OT person of the public can. Right. Is this a place where that can happen? Is it happening? And or is it easy? Yep. So if you'll let me hold the question at the end and run through some of these, because I think we'll hit on some parts. But uh, to quick answer your question, um, I would say yes. And so, um, you know, we have a suite of applications right now. The Atlas Workbench is really your application for ongoing current projects. Um, there was a policy put out, I believe it was uh, in May 2020, that it was signed that we want, you know, by standard, some of these documents coming in through Atlas. Um, to kind of jump to one of our other questions, what deliverables um, need to be part, and I just realized, I'm over here looking at my whiteboard screen and y'all can't see it. Let me get up here. I've been tracking your questions as we go here. Um, so there's point forward, right, to get this snowball effect. But the other part of Atlas, when we say it's not just GIS, is we're trying to help liaison to lots of different parts of the organization. And one of those things that we've been doing a lot is taking old data, spatializing it so that we can add it on to our map interfaces so folks can use the map interface to say, what is around me? use the GIS file spatially to then find your right rabbit hole. That's something that folks that know me have heard that a lot. You know, we've got a lot of information at DOT. A lot of it is confusing to look through, but a common language that we all have is that spatial relationship, right? So if we're able to say, hey, I'm a project manager, I've got a new, you know, bridge crossing, and you wanna see who's been within a mile of you in the past, we're working on backlogging that data and also spatializing it so that we can give that awareness moving forward. So yeah, we're, we're working with the right of way unit right now to make some of their older files and applications more readily accessible. And then in terms of access to Atlas, because um, I think that also hits on one of your points, anybody in the DOT project community can get access to Atlas. Okay, so when I say DOT project community, I mean consultants, I mean external partners, MBOs, RPOs, FHWA, all those types of folks, DOT project managers, uh, express designers, STIP people. Um, one of the things that we're looking to do in 2022 is, uh, like I said, simplify is a uh, goal of 2022. And to make it just a little bit easier for you guys to figure out how to get into Atlas, um, because it is some of our applications are GIS based, you know, there's a, a two step process to get you in. Once you're in, you should be good. I will say if you ever have issues getting into Atlas, at atlas at ncdot.gov, um, 
it's a different kind of help desk, I'll say, than some of the help desks that you're used to because it sits within the business unit side of the world. So the hope is that when you contact that email address, they'll be able to speak your speak <laughs> and not maybe some of the tech lingo that you get um, at other help desks. Um, but I'll come back a little bit more to that question in a second. Any other questions you'd have me add? Yes. Mm-hmm, good question. So I'll take this point to kind of re-emphasize again. Um, when we think about Atlas, I want you guys to think about the final step, that final step of this is the thing that I want to go into the project record that if someone you know, outside of my group that knows I put it there, they know that that's the final official document for that project. Um, so, in terms of who should do that finalization, it's like a lot of things. It's gonna be that project manager discretion. Um, what we've seen in action is that a lot of the project managers, once you go through your you know, comments and reviews process, you get to the end of the day, you've got your final thing that you wanna submit into the record. That's when, typically, I think right now, I think the, the consultant PM is performing that on a lot of divisions and, and disciplines behalf, but that could be anybody. Anybody can upload into the application. We have uh, tracking on that to say, you know, who's the NCID that gave it to us, when, um, and also working with the various units to handle how you, you know, sometimes we have a final, final document, but projects get shelved. You know, we might need to do a new consultation or we might need to do, you know, an update to our NRTR document and working with the various units to be able to capture that kind of point in time. And that point in time might mean, you know, the originator of that might have been a consultant in the first place. Maybe if you're just going back to do a consultation, that might be, you know, the EPU PM that's helping you to finalize that into the system. All right. So. And to follow up on that, Teresa, yeah. in general, if you're the one producing the deliverable and it's not going into a bigger you know, uh, document, then you should upload it. Uh, so if you're producing that deliverable, you upload it. If it's compiling like into a bigger document, you go into your uh, PM or whoever's managing that. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to jump into some of these common questions that I anticipated and have a little bit of information for you. And then uh, any more you think of, we will also make this presentation available along the same place that the ASI presentation is going to be. And we're going to keep this whiteboard live. So if you guys have questions after the conference, you know, Atlas at ncdot.gov is always there for your questions, but if there are these common ones that you want to make sure get uh, broadly communicated because you think it's something that might com be confusing, please continue to contribute. Um, so a big one we get is why can't we just put it onto SharePoint like we did it in the past? SharePoint, Connect Reconstruction, Connect Express Design, we're integrated with all of those different things. So when you give a file to Atlas, Atlas takes that file and by the nature of the standard deliverable namings that we have, we can automatically assign that document metadata with it. If you're familiar with Connect Preconstruction, it has tons of benefits in terms of flexibility. However, that flexibility makes cross-project reporting hard, just to, you know, to be frank about it. So, and we have limited data governance. So if a, a consultant is coming in to, to upload a document, just a quick screenshot here if you can see it, all these different values along the side are the various properties or metadata that you can put on a document. Only one of those has a little asterisk next to it, which is the name. And that name can be whatever you want to call it. So what we've found in some of our data analysis is that in the past you end up with a file folder that has draft one, two, three, and six, and maybe three is marked as final because it was the final draft for submission three, <laughs> And you end up in kind of a clicking scenario of, is this the real thing that I'm looking for? By putting a document through Atlas, all of those subfields are filled in on your behalf because we know you're giving us the final for this deliverable name. We'll ask you, hey, is it okay that we rename your file for you? I know that that was an issue in the past. You know, we put out naming standards initially that people had to manually do. Now the system will automatically rename your file with the project name, the standard, you know, naming convention, 
and fill in the rest of this information. So, you know, historically, a project manager might have to, you know, get an alert that a file has been uploaded, then go check if the properties are right, check that, oh, this is a document that, uh, you know, Army Corps of Engineers needs to see. Well, then I have to download and re-upload that document into a place where, you know, they can access it. We can pre-configure that on the user's behalf. So if you're giving us a, you know, section permit or whatever, we know that that's a document that we want to have widely available to more of our partners. So rather than you need to click that button on, on an individual basis, we do that kind of on your behalf. And again, all of these values are set by the Atlas administrator. That Atlas administrator sits within the business unit. So they're the ones who, when you give us a call and you're like, hey, we got a new PDN public version coming out. And with that new PDN version, we're adding, you know, a stormwater control deliverable that wasn't in there before. Well, then the business person will call the other business person and say, hey, is this a document that you need to standardly share with external agencies? Where does it make sense to place this document? And then every time any project across the state gives you that document, the same metadata information is applied. So uh, right now, you know, there's just there's a lot to comb through. Um, this is just one particular example of the number of selections available in some of these various drop downs. You know, over time, I think just because, you know, we all have ideas about how things should be organized, you'll see that, you know, if I'm coming in and to give them a, a final document, you know, is it really the final? Is it my draft? Should that go under project development? Should that go under uh, merger documents, what values do I pick here? So using Atlas as a front end, those values are going to be applied the same on all of those final documents. So you keep the flexibility of being able to put your drafts right onto Connect Preconstruction, name them whatever you want as you go, but at the end of the day, we want you to go in through that gateway so that the final thing has what we want on it to enable reporting in the future. So you might also say, well, doesn't the key document search handle that for me? Unfortunately, it does give you back if you've applied the metadata, right? But that means that you gave it good data in the first place. You marked it right. You know, you, yourself, and I, we're all getting our submissions in, you know, at that 11 p.m. hour before our 12 a.m. deadline. And not all these values might get applied correctly. Um, also, when you get the search results back, so this is the screen you can go to, connect pre-construction home, click pre-construction search, and you can, you know, give me all the documents that have this key document value. Sounds, sounds like it's going to be the thing that I need. Unfortunately, what ends up coming back at the end of the day, um, and I thought I had a better screenshot for this, apologies, but when you go in and say, I wanted to ask the question, where has NCDOT completed a final CE in the last two years? It's a common question that we get. Apply that to any document that your group might be asked for in, in some of these you know, high-level executive asks that we talk about. Well, what comes back is 1,200 different results. On the first page that comes back, um, let me see if I have this slide. Oh, it looks like I deleted the slide. Anyways, the first page that comes back, you have a page in H system. So you have 10 results on that first page. So 10 results, 1,200 times, or whatever the math is, 120 times. Um, then when you click through those first 10 results, when I physically did this in the system, only three of the 10 were actually the final document. The other seven were a historic architectural survey that someone marked as a final environmental document. It was, you know, a EIS because the system doesn't know the difference between a CE and an EIS. But if we had used that gateway at the beginning, uh, systems, you know, you can do systems a lot of different ways. The queryability of, you know, the SQL database that is behind the scenes of Atlas is an easier way to dump out this information in the future if we get it in a standard way. So basically, this is good. It got us a long way, but we want to do a better job in the future so that when you know Mike gives me a call and says, where are my CEs for the last two years, he doesn't have to do what I did just through 10 of them to click and see, oh, is this the final CE that's actually signed? Is this the final CE that 
or is it just you know the preliminary checklist that someone didn't know the right value to apply? So it's helping to standardize these things across projects. Um, and then you know again, the document is not the only data that we care about tying us back to the last presentation. You know there's other things that are important that might not be the standard uh, properties that we have on our SharePoint side. So that could be things like the actual date of signature on a document. It allows us to add more attribution around our work um, because we can add qualitative questions in addition to these upload controls. That way you can contact atlas at ncdot.gov and say, hey, can you pull me a query of all of this type of document that I received that also meets XYZ criteria from another discipline unit? So we can do more of those ad hoc queries moving into the future if we utilize the system. So I've got about five minutes left, so I'm going to speed through a little bit here. Um, isn't Atlas just GIS? Isn't it just environmental? I want a big no on the screen because I want to quash any, any confusion about that. Um, you know, we have GIS applications. Spatial is a universal language that we all speak, uh, whether it's in your disciplines, in your divisions. When we get around a table, uh, the way it was described to me in old school land was you had the plan sheet out on the table, and everybody's looking at the same place, and that helps you communicate. So it does have a lot of GIS in it. Don't get me wrong, but there's a lot more. I mentioned before we currently have 17 PDN disciplines um, represented in the Atlas Workbench. Only two of those have environmental in their name. So we have EAU, EPU, um, and we also have, you know, 15 others that have seen value in standardizing their data that's not captured by another system and have value in finalizing those project documents into the record in a standard way. So, um, yeah, we'll, and also right now we, rep we have representation from all the PDN stages that are currently published. So think everything from express design to project letting. We have worked with the various disciplines um, to talk about you know, what makes sense to have into this standard process. Um, not everything is covered within that. We're working with um, the IPD group for the PDN uh, 3.0 that's supposed to come out this summer to get that even more aligned with the PDN. Same terms, because think about like just the number of different lists we have out there, to my next point. What deliverables need to be uploaded? Your current source of truth is on the Atlas Connect site. We have the workbench standards document as well as the comprehensive document list. However, we agree, this is confusing. We have a lot of different lists across the department right now of what is a key deliverable and what do I need to do. You know, we've got the PDM list, the Atlas list, and the Connect key documents list. I can't tell you if we're going to get there, but my personal goal by the end of 2022 is that you got one list you go to and it tells you the rest of this information instead of needing to find three different lists. Um, so also we do reference Atlas related documents in the PDN. Look for the little A superscript um, throughout the document to give you some trigger there, but we're working with the IPD group to make that clear. And how does this fit in? Reminder, little a, we're going to be doing a lot of outreach over the next two months. I think we're going to two divisions a week um, for the next two months to talk about um, how's, you know, IPD has gone ahead of us, you know, how's PDN working for divisions. We're coming back behind it to say, okay, how do we align better with this? Um, how do we make our application more scalable than it's been in the future for the different different types of projects? You know, because again, remember, Atlas began before IPD. So when we went around talking to, you know, we had probably what a hundred plus different stakeholder interviews. We heard from the business units and disciplines at the time. Our biggest concern is that they don't come talk to us when they might need to come talk to us and we're the ones kind of waving the red flag at the end of the day too late in the process. So we built the application with the intention of making sure everybody checks with everybody. But PDN has kind of flipped that on its head. Instead, we want to be able to answer confidently, no, I don't have to do this thing earlier in the process to speed things up. So we're going to be transforming the Atlas Workbench in 2022 to take that uh, scope in versus scope out approach about all the various disciplines and giving you some easier tools to do that. And with my one minute left, how can you get involved? 
Um, you can get involved by participating in our upcoming outreach sessions. Um, if you are in a division in this room, um, hopefully if you were on the list, you received an invite um, to a session in either February or March. If you're in a division and didn't get one of those and you're interested, please let us know. Um, at any point in time, you can contact us to update your you know, current workbench uh, content, because again, that is owned by the business. If there's something wrong there, or there's something you want to improve, let us know, because a lot of those changes we can make within a matter of 60 seconds, hit the button, and it goes live across the department with, without needing to you know, do these ongoing updates. Training, we have a monthly training, new user training, first Wednesday-ish of every month, depending on the holiday seasons. Um, so sign up for that, new users, refresher, just spend some time. And we're also working on things like a new training video library um, to give you some more you know, quick hit kind of videos. I just need to know how to upload a document. Caitlin, I don't want to read your 100 page standards document. <laughs> you know, uh, can I go watch a 30 second video instead to, to give me that support? Um, the other thing that you can come to our booth to do or email us is we are creating an Atlas super user group. So if you want to be super and you care about Atlas, um, you can sign up. Um, what that super user group is going to do is they're going to be the people where we're doing early stage demos to asking them to participate in user testing before an application goes live, and really trying to get more people involved in the process so we can make a better product moving forward. Um, you know, a lot of us are you know, pretty knowledgeable about what you guys do, but without y'all's help, we're not gonna get it exactly right, and we want to get it right. And learn more here, scan the QR code, come see us at the table, chance to win a gift card. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Uh, we up here if you have questions because it's lunch and we won't hold you up. Yeah, everybody, have a good lunch. The PDHs should be on the out, uh, right outside the door. And again, thank you, Leilani and her team for, for all your hard work.